most of the videos out there will focus on rehabbing an old tool or taking a brand new tool and resetting that bevel for your personal preferences. And that's a good process to know how to do because you really need to do it on every tool that comes into your shop. But if you make your decisions about your sharpening system purely based on that initial process, you might not have the best system for you. Just think about it, from that point on, the sharpening you do for years to come is maintenance sharpening. So the question is, what system allows me to take a chisel off the wall, take it to the bench, get it sharp as fast as possible, and back to work in the easiest way possible? Because you and I both know we're lazy, and if it's not easy, we're not going to do it as frequently as we should. All right, so the system that I have here takes me about a minute to get the job done. Let me show it to you. And that's all there is to it. Now, it goes by fairly quickly, but there's a lot going on in each one of those steps. And I want to show you some of the details so you understand. And even if you don't use the products that I have here, you can apply this concept to just about any other sharpening system. Let me show you. The first thing you probably noticed is my honing guide. It's a Veritas honing guide, which has this nice gauge here, so you can actually get the exact angle you're looking for. And that's critical to making this process go quickly. This also has a very unique cam roller on the bottom, so I can turn it and introduce a micro bevel. So if you look very closely at the chisel here, I've got a primary bevel that was set during the initial sharpening, and then a secondary bevel at the bottom, just a few degrees steeper than the primary. And the idea is I'm really only sharpening that secondary bevel. And I'll even put a little sharpie here so we could watch our progress later. Notice on a brand new, at least fairly new, uh, blade here, I've got the primary bevel sharpened from the factory, but right at the edge, a little bit hard to see, but uh, just that very last sixteenth of an inch is the secondary bevel sharpening. I don't need to worry about the rest of this bevel, just that tip that's the most important. Now an expensive honing guide like this does make life a whole lot easier, but you certainly can use one of these cheap ones, and you may want to make yourself a shop-built gauge that helps you decide how far out the blade goes for your various angles. The key is to be able to set it up quickly, hit the exact angle you want, and get to sharpening. And let's not forget the cheapest honing guide of all, your hands. There are a lot of people who get enough skill to do this freehand, so if you have that skill, all the power to you. I do not have that skill, and I'll use a honing guide. Now the sharpening medium you use is very important because some take time. For instance, water stones need to be soaked. Uh, this particular ceramic stone just needs a spritz of water and it's ready to go. If you have a sandpaper system, you're in the same boat. Spray it with water and you're ready for action. All right, so let's quickly do the sharpening. Now, how much you actually have to sharpen that bevel depends on how dull the tool is, but I'm also using my highest grit here, which tells you that it's really not that dull. It's a maintenance sharpening. So I'm at 8,000 grit right now. And I'd say about 20 strokes, maybe? And when I flip the tool over, check it out. Secondary bevel's nice and clean. The marker is gone, which means it's worn evenly. Those markers are great for gauging your progress. All right now, we can take this out of the tool and start to work on the back. When you sharpen the bevel, a little bit of the metal is going to sort of wrap over the edge and create a very fine burr. At 8,000 grit, it is super fine. You might not even be able to feel it. But we're going to just clean up the back side, which has already been flattened a long time ago. Dry it off, and you're good to go. Now, if you want, you can certainly shave yourself to prove that it's sharp. A lot of people like to do that. Or you can just take a little scrap of wood, just kind of run it along the edge, and you'll know when it's sharp. Now, of course, this system is dependent on two very important things. Number one, that you've sharpened your tool properly in the first place, so you have a nice foundation to work with, a good flat back and a good quality bevel. If you have that, this whole process becomes much easier. And you want to make sure you don't let your tools get too dull. If they're too dull, then you have to step back a number of grits and work your way back up to your highest. For me, I like to stay with that 8,000 grit, so it means I'm going to sharpen fairly frequently, but the actual sharpening time is very, very minimal. And it's like they say, what's the most dangerous tool in the shop? This tool right here. But second to that is a dull tool. Right, dull tools require you to put a lot of extra force behind them. And by doing that, you put yourself at risk for a wayward stroke to end up in your hand, your leg, uh, or worse. All right? So you just want to make sure these things stay sharp, and it actually makes them a lot safer. And plus, when you do get cut, you almost don't feel it. So I guess that's a bonus. All right, so find a sharpening system that works for you. Make it quick and easy. Don't rush, but it's got to be quick, easy, and convenient. All right, thanks for watching.